Uh, Hi, Brian Chambers. What's up, guys? Let me raise your volume here a little bit. Uh, so I can so I can put this on the screen. What is your official title at CIG? My official title is Development Director of Foundry 42, Frankfurt. So here, here we are in the Grand Bada Bazaar. And we look out... Yeah, I have to mute my other volume, otherwise I'm hearing both conversations, and I don't really like hearing myself too much. <laughs> that's, that's understandable. Um, Dude, it was so, so much fun hanging out with you guys. It was so cool. Oh, we, we had a blast. We were trying so hard not to just fanboy the entire time and be lame. So, <laughs> we, we had a lot of fun. But um, thank you for joining us, and thank you for hopping on. Dude, absolutely. So, we'll... we'll, we'll what was your sort of uh, impression of the whole thing now that Gamescom's over? Um, I mean, for, I think it was incredibly successful. The The amount of new players that were on the show floor was nuts. Um, I, You know, I think it, it was a, probably a fair mix, but from what I saw, it was predominantly new people, and those new people are waiting two or three hours, right? Yeah. Yeah, without even um, seeing the gameplay, really. Yeah, absolutely, because we, we couldn't show much actually out visible because that all has to be governed by ratings and so on. So, you know, we had to put the little sticker ratings and the, the small trailer we had running, uh, you know, you couldn't show it killing any people. And even if you blew up a ship, they're like, well, there could have been a person in that ship, so therefore you'll be an 18 rating. And we're like, come on, guys. Yeah. Um, but then for me, I mean... Um, Honestly, uh, seeing the reactions, including yourself, of of 3.0 and seeing that playthrough, I still remember. And, and I don't know for your your audience that may have heard it already, but we're doing this playthrough of another build, making sure it's solid, making sure all the parts and pieces are there because you know we were polishing stuff until the end, so we show as best as we can. Um, and it was probably I think we started like the last playthrough before we were opening the doors. And I saw you sitting on the stairs there, and I sat next to you, and I kind of had one eye on the screen and one eye watching you. <laughs> and then I was just going, okay, dude, what do you think? What do you, oh, wait for this part. Wait for this part. And literally, I think we both had goosebumps watching it. It was, it's, it was over the top. It was really cool. Yeah. I mean, this, this is what – I mean, as, as a backer, this is the sort of stuff that I didn't think I'd really be seeing for another year. Because yeah. when, when I when I mentioned it to uh, to Chris, it was that e even when there are, are delays in whatever version, when that version does come out, it includes at least twice as much stuff as anybody is, is expecting or what what was hinted of what we'd get. So this yeah, is yeah. amazing to see. But dude, and and as a dev, you know, we've said constantly we're we're used to being locked in a room for you know or a building for years, right? Um, uh, one to four years before the public really gets some in-depth stuff of what we're looking at. And um, to be able to share progress with people and to see a positive reaction, I mean, that, that kind of feeds me and feeds the team so much. It gets us so pumped up. It's cool. That's awesome. So you guys uh, jazzed to get back to you doing the work? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we were back at it today or back at it yesterday. Um yeah, we uh, we recorded, uh, we did the Frankfurt ATV today, so you get some more kind of in-depth insight stuff. Um, team's already pushing for 2.5, 2.6, and 3.0. Also got a whole other eye on Squadron and working with the UK, pushing on that. So, I mean, our hands are all over the place. It's it's uh, it's thick. <laughs> uh, do you, would you mind if I asked you a little bit about some of the uh, the game systems that were shown off during the demo? Yeah, yeah, I can answer as much as I can. Yeah. Um, some stuff I may say, wait, just because we're going to give them more in depth later. You know. Yeah. Um, well, there's there's already tons of questions flooding into chat, but the one I was sort of sort of wondering about just a minute ago, I'm gonna I'm gonna go myself first. Is uh, the planetary t uh, terrain generation? What? Yeah. What, are there sort of a, is it? I imagine there's a lot of complex stuff going on there to make these terrain this terrain look realistic. Um, because it looks, it does look phenomenal. It's very, very believable. It's not, and it's not sort of the the weird uh, procedural stuff that we see sometimes, like like with with uh, with No Man's Sky or, or like Minecraft, for example, where you get these unbelievable structures just depending on how things generate. Um, it yep. looks very realistic. No, no, thanks. I mean, the, the the guys that have been charging that up, they know the tech extremely well. They've been working in CryEngine for you know twelve plus years. Um, you know, and it's it's 
some big brain math that's pushing to get the basic shapes and then there's some big brain math that sits on top of that that, that refines each individual shape and there's a big brain math that sits on top of that that smooths out where each bit touches one another based off of certain conditions and so on so um if you look at or if you guys search for the was it pc games did a bit on it but then uh, pc games hardware came out and actually uh, they came out at the same time and they wrote more of a kind of an in-depth techie article on it right and it really does give a step-by-step -step as far as kind of the the technical approach that we're taking and they even show the different lod's and what we're setting on top of the lod's and all that so it's it's pretty insightful that's that's awesome. I'm gonna have to find that and dig into that a little bit because that's yeah. It's the, it's PC games hardware, and I think I think it might have come out the same week as Gamescom. I know the first one came. PC games came out a few weeks ahead. They wanted to jump on procedural and said, "Okay, well, you know, give us something new before anybody else." Right as marketing stuff goes. Yeah, on the uh, on the space simulation fan spectrum, I I, uh, I really like digging into all like the real world kind of NASA stuff. Um, in, in actual uh, astronomy and everything. So I, yeah, I like yeah. these systems when they come together. Uh, yeah, we actually, we had a backer here. Um, that was probably six months ago. Um, and he came, well, the backer was the kid. This, this, uh, this kid that came, I think he was 15 or 16, and he came with his dad. And his dad was some like ex NASA dude. So he, I ended up sitting him down with our system designers and they geeked out for like an hour and a half talking about kind of velocity and physics and procedurals and, and thrust and all that. It was, it was pretty awesome. That's, that's fantastic. It's, it's cool seeing this stuff come together. I mean, there are some things that, that, I, that I, ex I expect probably won't be like entirely realistic, like in terms of like the, the orbital dynamics, like you wouldn't really want to get into a dogfight and, and, uh, accidentally crash into the planet because you, you yeah. weren't retrograde too much, but um, it's pretty cool. Uh, let me grab a question. Yeah, when, it, when it comes down to that stuff, I mean, that's, it's all going to be a balance because our, our roots are in realism, right? But yeah. if, it, if something's so real that it inhibits gameplay and it inhibits it being fun, it's actually just more of a distraction, then that's when <laughs> we, we, right? We have the ability to come in and we, as we should take some liberties. So, so we make it to where that, that gameplay is going to feel solid and not just screw with everybody. Uh, so Dellen asked, are the pictures from the PC games magazine, uh, from the procedural generation, uh, the 2.0 or is that the 1.0 system that I guess that Chris was talking about? Um, I'd have to look at the images again. I think we snuck in a couple, uh, majority, I think it was the 1.0, um, just so everybody understands 2.0. <clears throat> so 1.0 basically created that foundation. We can create these planets even with different ecosystems, although you guys have only seen a, a little bit. Um, the, then, you know, the, the, it's, the nav mesh is there, it's physicalized, you can walk anywhere, right? So it's hit a visual, uh, visual target, if you will, and it's hit a functionality target. Now the version 2.0 for us is really a lot of a tool set that's now sitting on top and in conjunction with the procedural tech where the artists and designers can go in and incredibly quickly paint in entire areas uh, for gameplay. And they literally are pushing and pulling geometry um, instantaneously. They hit a button, they're in game, they're blowing the trees up, you're seeing crap splinter, they're trudging through water and you, you see the ripples and so on. So it's, it's just getting uh, a tool set to the artists and designers so now they can use this tech and actually start forming out these planets that make them really fit into the area of the world that they should if that makes sense yeah so with the, with the trees splintering and everything i, I know that um sometimes when, when like a, a exploding ship part or something hits you then those actual physical objects can, can cause some damage to your player character can uh, yeah. can something like a, a, a tree explosion hurt you if a giant splinter hits you yeah, I don't know if a splinter would, but if, you know, one cracks in half and, and hits you based yeah. off of how the game's set up and based on the size of the object that's physical, well, based on the size of the object that's physicalized and based off the velocity and direction, I mean, if you're in the path, then, yeah, you're screwed. <laughs> so the, the, uh, the part of the video we're watching right now is uh, when the, I, I think Chris landed the freelancer 
And oh yeah, yeah. I'm it was, it right it was off centered, and so it couldn't really get down. Uh, and it yeah, that was the one point like, where I cringed. When I cringed, I was like, "Oh no, no!" I'm like, "That's too high for a jump." What the hell? So, do you think we ever might get like a, like a climbing mechanic or or anything like that? Oh, absolutely, hundred percent. I think if this happens once, once all the mechanics and stuff are filed in, yeah, you would absolutely be able to get up there, right? Or it even goes a little further, and maybe that that the the hatch opens even a bit more to rest on the physical, you know, terrain. It does a, a detection check, and it yeah. it would open more. But yeah, the way that the terrain is physicalized, is there a chance that 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 stuff, like like uh, an eventual climbing or, or whatever maneuvering system, there would be could also apply to to terrain dynamically, or is that sort of uh, a different thing entirely? Yeah, in theory, it could. I mean, again, if if you think of a mechanic and you think of okay, well, a ledge needs to be. X amount of sharp angle, and then I can reach it and I can grab it. I mean, as, as long as we set those parameters are, and let's say we want to, uh, the side of a hill that you can climb up, right? Whatever, right? right? Well, uh, that sounds a little silly, but you know, you literally could tag up that side of the hill that's procedurally generated to hit the parameters that are needed for that mechanic to work. That's awesome. I uh, On the plane ride back, I was watching some sort of uh, Red Bull uh, free climbing documentary. So it's, <laughs> that's, I, I'm, not a, I'm not expecting anything like that, but now that's sort of yeah, yeah. Like, hmm, how, how can we uh, maneuver these environments? Um, Sad Boy says, when the game is complete, uh, how long could it... So, so the number was starting out like 40 minutes to go across Stanton. Uh, so if you were to travel like bet between systems, how, how long would that take? I think he was asking... <laughs> Like like ten solar systems. I don't know how. Yeah, I don't know. I know we have the math. That's that's one I don't have the top of my head. Um, we've done some different tests because when we started, when we did did the procedural, we started with one planet, and the next thing you know, we created the other one, and we were jumping from planet to planet. We first got it in. Literally, the team was hyped, and there was you know, fifteen guys. I think. Yeah. five minutes later it's a little bit bigger and we're like dude what the hell so it was just this reaction that we were flying at top clip towards this planet yeah but it's just the distance it was so it made us think a little bit and i don't know the exact numbers that'll be up to the designers and chris to to really sort out but i mean it is it is a fair distance yeah, hey baron I've, I've got a list of all the questions would you like me to pick a couple good ones um yes please I'll Help and right, and uh, heads up, at, at some point, Disco's going to knock on my door and go, hey, please feed me. It's my birthday. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> uh, Count <laughs> Cogpox asked, uh, Chris Roberts mentioned briefly during the presentation that because of the procedural tech, we now have no shortage of real estate for building. Has there been discussions about org-owned bases being able to be set up on the procedural planets? Um, there is some loose discussion of that, and I know there's, there's um, documentation of what that would take. Um, the possibility is absolutely out there. I know that's an incredibly soft answer, but technically there would be no reason why we can't do that. Um, we wouldn't focus attention on that specifically, though, until obviously we have everything else completed. That's pretty cool. I, uh, one second. Um, Dude, I'm going to have like like the, the Chambers volcano or something, right? I'm going to have my own, <laughs> my own stuff. It's, it's going to be nuts. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, somebody, somebody asked, uh, what's the current idea regarding uh, gas giants about how those might be approached? terms of like interacting with them or trying to go over to them oh no idea on that that's that's more on the the system designers i know there's a lot of discussion that's gone through kind of atmosphere and pull and other stuff like that um but yeah i don't i don't know how uh how you would interact or not interact with those sure that's that's pretty understandable i know the thing is i mean the, but but what i can say about it at least is that you know if if you see it you can get to it and if you can get to it, something's going to happen, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys are just getting the, uh, the 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 planetary stuff in there, so that's probably a different different scenario entirely. Because you guys have a little yeah. bit of, of lift and drag in the current flight model for atmospherics, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And and I think it was like the LA ATV or something a couple of weeks ago. They started talking about how that stuff just started coming online and 
how they're playing around with that. Now, a lot of this stuff is, you know, we have a tremendous amount of documentation on the design side where this stuff has been thought out. But sometimes there is a disconnect between paper and actually implementation. So now that the planets are here, now that more ships are coming online and more of the tech is there for the gameplay, now we're able to really start churning through this stuff and put it through as quick as possible to see if it sticks, if it's functioning the way that, that we intended to. Sure. All right, I've got another Welcome question back, for you. Commander. Ascendant 333 asks, first, do you work with Hannes Apple? And if so, can you greet him? I'm an old Giga Games fan. And how is the city going to work and look like? Will it have suburbs around it and a big downtown area in the center? Uh, yeah, I work with Hannes. I've worked with Hannes for years. He's a, he's a cool guy. I always make fun of his little rat tail. Um, uh, yeah, the cities are going to have a very specific look to what type of city that they are. Um, within our tools within design and the way we're modularly building everything out, we have the ability to quickly tweak the locations of cities or and uh, sorry, the, the makeup of any individual city. Um, you have some that are gonna be more high class, upper scale, right? Uh, you're gonna have some that are definitely more slummy. You're gonna have some stuff that definitely echoes, you know, the realistic uh, parts of the world, you know, on the other side of the tracks, maybe it's a little more low poverty versus the high class where the pirates hanging out, where are other people and so on. So it's, it's, yeah, I mean, they are going to be laid out logically as you would imagine, <clears throat> you know, a functioning city would be, but those could differ from city to city as, as they differ around the world. I'm sure there's going to be, um, as part of this procedural system, there's going to be structures and stuff that are probably put around, uh, or uh, you guys might go in and put those manually as, as points of interest, but are, is there anything yeah. that might be sort of like an, like an urban generation for these planets, or we expect the, uh, the procedural stuff to be mostly focused on the environments? Uh, urban how? What do you mean? Uh, like, say, if, if there is a partially sort of sort of uh colonized planet where it's not quite art corp where like the entire thing is is uh just like covered covered with with urban city stuff um but if you yeah. were flying around could you like find a little city and, and fly down there and fly around it or yeah i mean the thing is if again if you see it on a planet you'll be able to get there so w one of the key factors of what we're you know what kind of we're hinting at it version two of the procedural stuff um <clears throat> We have, and I'll give a little more detail. We, 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 in a sense, can kind of create these buckets that the artist can go in. And let's say from a small scale, I can put four types of rocks and different types of grass and some different types of trees. I can put all those into one bucket. I then go to the hillside and I start painting that. The trees are going to have different orientation. The rocks are going to have different orientation. They're going to be sunk in the ground at different levels and so on. Sure. Within a matter of 30 seconds, I could paint quarter of a planet all to have a different look but nothing is going to look like it's mirrored and nothing's going to look like it's echoed right right but that same concept we're creating modular set pieces if you will that will all function together in a slightly different orientation so in theory i could put those modular pieces in a paint bucket and i could paint all across the hillside next thing you know there's your favelas of space if you will Nice. And those things then have to, for design standpoint and for consistency, have to be able to be interacted with. Which, if if you think about really at that low level detail, is is absolutely nuts. Yeah. Right. But but we're we're that's the stuff that we have working in our current builds right now that we're playing with. I can only I can only dream of what you guys actually have. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like when we saw the 3.0 stuff, you're we like, man, they're sitting on so much stuff that they haven't. Yeah. I mean, I, I know honestly, that it's it, ready. You guys push it, but but there's yeah, and honestly, that events. that that was the best thing for me out of Gamescom was, you know, I. I you know, I have to uh, interact with a lot of people like this, right? I randomly jumped on, and I'm like, oh, bad news is there. I'm going to jump in, right? And now I'm chatting with you, which is awesome. Um, but so many times I'm like, oh, just wait till you see the procedural. Oh, wait till you see what we're working on. Oh, wait till you see. Yeah. And to actually be able to get to show at least a chunk of what we're working on and to see the reaction and people are like, ugh, right? So I know people will chill out a little bit on me for a little bit, 
um, until we start hinting about the newest stuff that we're pushing, and you know that'll lead up probably to to Citizen Con and and afterwards. Hey, I don't know if you, if you would know um, a lot about this particular aspect, but Chris <clears throat> sort of hinted in one of the one part of the presentation that there might be the possibility of, of like player homesteads. I don't know what that might look like. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know exactly what that would look like either, but again, if I break down kind of all the tech that I was talking about yeah. right now, I, there's no reason why it couldn't be there, right? Yeah. There's absolutely, technically, there's absolutely no reason why, um, but we would focus on all the main bits that we need to and make sure that, you know, we have everything that we've promised out to the public there first. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that would be in the, then in a, in a roadmap moving forward and see what kind of what order we want to pull off and stuff like that, which is cool about this project. Some of that stuff could also, um, you know, even get to a community vote where we go, cool, we finished these bits. Yeah. Here's 10 more. You guys vote. What do you want? And that's where we put our energy to. And that's, that's again, that's another cool aspect of, of the way we're, we're doing development here. And to quickly clarify for, uh, for, for chat, um, that does not mean go on Reddit right now and post a thing that says, Brian Chambers says, Buying players, playing housing is confirmed. That's not what that is. It's just. Oh, absolutely not. No, no. I'm <laughs> saying. Well, let me let me switch it the other way, and let me say it's 100% not confirmed. Yes. Um, what I can say, I mean, we have tons and tons of documentation of stuff we want to do. Once we finish all the stuff that was promised, that is out there, that that, that is openly discussed, and we get it out there for the full PU and for Squadron and for everything. We have lists that are thick, and it probably, our lists probably include every single question and every single thing you guys can possibly <laughs> imagine, just because we are just as big of fanboys of this game as you guys are. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Man. They don't have to, I, thank you for, uh, for... So yeah, please go on Reddit and say, Brian confirms nothing. <laughs> and then we're never going to be get Brian on here ever again. Ever. 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 Well, until tomorrow, maybe. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, let me let me dig through this a little bit. Um, there, there's going to be, uh, I think, with the modular buildings and uh, just these different elements that sort of get pieced together. Uh, wasn't there a while back that there would be a little bit of a shader that could be applied to these in order to make them look different for different uh, areas or? Oh yeah, no, that's absolutely part of it as well. I mean, because you're not only talking the geometry, but you're talking the look. So each thing has to have its different feel, you know, on. Uh, yeah, things will be uh, grimier and dirtier in, in the outskirts and, and lower poverty. And um, yeah, yeah. So it's, I mean, there still has to be a bit of an artist touch. But within, again, the system that we're generating, we're generating layers and layers and layers that we can build upon. Um, so, you know, even one really nice fancy building with... Um, another layer or a shader of grime based on where it is cool it's got a wholly different look right and then we can put other you know kind of damaged states on top of that that even give it a different look so we can build on top of these these things with layers and then bake them all down and then it's uh it gives it a whole new feel so are, is is population and uh is that going to be part of like a, a procedural thing because if you're particularly you know or, or if you're creating all these different cities, is, I guess the different economy levels or whatever would also affect the NPCs that appear there and how they might yeah. look, or, or their, even their population density of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and based on where they live and what they're doing, I mean, they would have, you know, different careers per se, right? So all that, absolutely. I mean, it's, we can't just create a city and have it sit there and, you know, a couple players jump in or you know a few hundred it's like we they definitely these cities need to be alive um so all this ground tech that we're doing we're always pushing things going cool how many people are we getting in there and how many uh, player driven characters are in there versus how many npcs what's that balance what's that tipping point cool here's our technical tipping point you know what let's push it further if we do this and this and this we can get another hundred in there or whatever right so we're constantly looking at those numbers. Um, but yeah, I mean, they definitely need to be populated in order to, you know, have a sense, more of a sense of realism. Grab 
have one more question. I mean, I, I need, if I'm playing a good dude, I need bad dudes to come and try to take my crap, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I won't. And also, I want some of those bad dudes to even be on the cusp. And, you know, maybe they look at me shady, but they're not stealing my stuff. But I still don't want to get close to them. So we're going to have a whole variety of, of uh, different NPCs in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I am curious about that sort of interaction system that keeps being talked about. The, uh, oh, I'm forgetting the name of it. It begins with an S. Um, some, some way that the, uh, the relationships and everything work together. But when, when you go and you, you talk to somebody and then, you know, across a different system, depending on how you interact with that one person, you may have affected them in some yeah. different way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, subsumption, the AI yeah, system. There we go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we just did a big uh, deep dive on that. You'll get more details on that a bit with uh, Francesco Ricucci. He's our lead AI programmer. And he just did a blurb on that for and how that relates to what we saw in 3.0 and nav meshes and all that. Um, you'll see that come out on Thursday. That's awesome. I'm looking forward to that. I managed to uh, to kill the video somehow on here. So I'm trying to figure out how to get yeah, it back, I, but we can still talk. I just noticed that. Uh, I got like uh, one more question, I think, and then I need to jump out to see if if uh, Jared's done. Well, what the hell is going on with your screen now? Uh, I have I have no idea. I'm I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to get a different monitor to get those things set up. Um, we have to reset the stream after this. Um, Brian breaks everything. Uh, there was there was a question about uh, mobile glass changes uh, and and when those might be coming. Uh, what, like UI for it or, yeah. or what? Yeah, I mean, that's on a, that's kind of on a constant, um, change. There's obviously tech behind that. Uh, we build up the UI team. The UI team is, is I think 100% now in the UK, um, which is awesome because it's, you know, it's a mix between, uh, code and assets. So I don't have the roadmap in front of me to go, oh, well, you're going to see this at this time and this at this time. But I know it's something, I think I want to say within the last two months, we've probably brought in another two or three strong UI guys. So I think you're going to see uh, more traction coming on that pretty quick. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for hop uh, hopping on with us and, and taking the time to answer these questions. And again, it was Yeah, awesome. sorry. I, 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 Welcome back. Yeah, yeah, honestly, that was it, literally, I'm not exaggerating. Blast. I wish I had more time to hang out with you guys, but we were constantly busy. It's like from the moment I woke up to the moment I passed out of sleep, it was just go, 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 go. Sure. You know? Are you going to be at CitizenCon? You know, I was just talking with Cameron about that today. He was like, well, do you want to go? I'm like, well, I'm from LA, so selfishly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd love to go and hang out. So I think there's a probability. Not confirmed yet. But, okay. um, 100% yeah, yeah, not yeah. confirmed. But, uh... 100% not confirmed. If, quote, it quote. if it happens, I look forward to seeing you there. Again, thank you very much, yeah. sir. Um, enjoy the rest Absolutely. of your evening. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, you know, if I randomly see you and I have some time, I have no problem jumping in anytime. Um, and we can even plan something out in advance if you want um, and organize it a little bit more if you want, you know? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, uh, give give Jared a, a happy birthday from all of us here. And uh, I'll Absolutely. Talk to you next time. Absolutely. Take care, guys. See you. Ciao.